Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter, volunteer at CPPCon. Uh, happy to be coming to you, uh, interviewing with Fedor Picus, which I'm, I did I say that last name right? Picus. Picus, I apologize. Um, so I got the pleasure of seeing Fedor's talk at C++ Now, and when I found out he was doing an academy class, I was even more excited. Um, and, and as well, it, it's my first time getting to interview with you, so Fedor, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, I, <clears throat> I'm currently a technical fellow at uh, Siemens Digital uh, Industries. Uh, came from Mentor Graphics, where uh, I was a chief scientist. The Mentor Graphics was acquired by uh, Siemens. Uh, my background initially is computational physics. So large scale uh, simulations and uh, large problems like uh, you know, field solvers, the, the <clears throat> things like that. So I, I got to work on the early supercomputers. Oh, wow. Uh, and then uh, when I went into industry, so I worked for Mentor Graphics, you know, went up from from an engineer to the chief scientist, did a short stint at Google, uh, came back <laughs> to mentor, uh, then uh, joined Siemens. Uh, we're doing electronic design automation software. So again, a large capacity, a large throughput, massively parallel systems, solving very large uh, computationally intensive problems. It's basically the tools for designing, for using the current generation of computers to design and build the next one. That's awesome. And you've been going to CPPCon for, well, since it started, right? My first CPPCon was 2014. And then yeah, I know you've presented at a bunch of them. I, well, I presented on every, to everyone I went to, I skipped the, of the COVID one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people would have preferred to skip. Well, I, we had a great online program, but you know, it, it's definitely, I'm looking forward to seeing you and everyone else, you know, that's going to be on site. And so the class you're teaching this year is performance and efficiency in C++ for experts, future experts, and um, everyone else. Uh, <laughs> so that's a, Post class, right? Is going to happen after the yeah, conference. Yeah, it's a post class, so the weekend after the conference. Um, and two days. Uh, I I know from at least hearing your talks, I'd be excited to take your class. But why don't you tell us a bit about it? So uh, okay, so the, f first of all, the class. I've never taught the class in this class in public. I did teach it internally at uh, Mentor uh, Siemens. I. I uh, gave a workshop at UCLA 2018 that is, you could say it's a very early version of this class. Uh, also, I have a book on the art of writing efficient software, which covers most of the material I will be presenting. So you, you, know, you could view the class as a sort of interactive and guided exploration of some of the material in the book. I have some newer material that didn't make it into the book. Uh, I have for the class some fundamentals of uh, high performance computing that I must cover, but I have prepared a lot more material than for two-day class. So I'll poll my students, see where their interests and their like, you know, programming needs are. And there will be some parts that I'll choose based on that. So I actually don't know the entire class I'm going to give yet. That's really kind of cool though, because so, you know, I can't remember how I came about it, but I thought when, when I saw your talk at C++ now, um, when we were talking, I thought I saw some, you know, I'll say additional slides and stuff that you were like, all of the things that you had to cut out. And, and my point to this is like the breadth of the knowledge that you have on this um, to be in a class that, you know, at least has that little bit of dynamicism so that if I had something, you know, that was in line with the efficiency um, to, to be able to get the input from the class and direct it that way, that, 
that's exciting. Um, have you had good luck doing that with classes before when you were doing it in internally? Yes. Uh, so all the classes are, are very interactive. Uh, I have the you know planned outline, but uh, based on the experience level and the interest of my audience, uh, I can deviate, especially in the exercise part where I can add more or less complex uh, exercises or focus on some of the things you know that I feel like they need to know. Mm -hmm. Now, the important part of this class is, and it's I think it's very important in general for teaching performance aspects uh, or, well, probably not just performance aspects, but in programming, specifically performance, where a lot of the results are very context and objective specific. Right. So it's hard to actually teach knowledge in a useful way. It's not hard to teach knowledge. It's hard to make it useful over, you know, long, t long term. So, yeah, it's, it's easy to show what a pattern is, but then to turn around and know where to apply that pattern. I, I think that's, that, but you know, with performance, uh, so you know, I can tell you like uh, the facts and I can, and some of them are very universal and some of them are the happenstance of the current hardware and its interactions with the compilers and the language. Mm -hmm. So large part of the class, and that's where the interactive work, the exercises come in, is actually for this audience to figure out how did we get to the conclusions Okay. So it's a basically learning how to learn the process for finding the answers because when they get to their own work, they may find entirely different answers. Understood. So the things that I told them to do or not to do may turn out to be false. But the way you arrive to, okay, this is false, what's, uh, what should I do? the way you arrive to that answer, that is pretty universal. I understand. So it gives them the tools to actually not just learn it from the example, but to take it back and implement the knowledge that they gained from doing that. Uh, yes. And as I said, some concepts are, you know, they would be hard to violate. It would mm -hmm. take some very unique system to change some of these. So those I teach as, like more or less universal truth in performance and others are, you know, even though they may be true today widely, uh, I would always say, you know, you know how we arrived to this conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have that same problem, don't trust the conclusion. Trust right them the methodology understood and so definitely a hands-on class with the laptop yes so code. they would need a programming environment uh, profiling i it would be easier on the students i don't require it but it would be easier if they had uh, access to my book on the art of writing efficient programming simply because they can go back and reread portions of what I explained at their own pace, you know, during the breaks or after the class. Uh, as I said, a lot of what I'll be covering is explained in the book. So after sort of learning how we got there, maybe as a uh, sort of summary of, okay, what did we get to and now with a better understanding, you know, reading the, this text would make it easier to follow the actual like, process for optimizing or for profiling for exploring performance. And I could see that also just being nice to have as a reference even after the class is over to be able to go back to as well. Yeah, so a lot of it does make for, kind of for a reference of techniques 
so there too. Now, uh, one uh, kind of general comment. So I did, you know, I did put it in the class uh, description, but one general comment. I focus on uh, performance as seen by high performance uh, computing uh, people. So if you were programming uh, for like a cell phone and performance for you is basically measure it in battery lifetime. Uh, the methods themselves would still be relevant. The conclusions would largely not be relevant for you because we will be measuring what you would consider a wrong metric. But the process for measuring the right metric would still be largely the same. Yeah, so I might show my lack of knowledge here, but isn't it kind of, you know, as I understand, it's like when we're measuring that performance, you always want to get the process done just as quick as you can, because it's either for getting the results or for you use less battery if you're more efficient and more performant anyways, right? No, so the, the high performance uh, targets, the low power targets, and the third type is low latency targets. Uh, they actually have very different requirements. So, for example, if you look at the high performance computing, and that's one of the things I will in some way cover, you will do, uh, you will discover that you can get the result faster by doing some unnecessary computations. Okay. The trick is you just don't know which ones uh, are unnecessary until you get there. But uh, basically you will be doing more work than necessary. And the mantra there is if you have idle silicon, use it for something that has at least a chance of being useful. Because oh, okay. at this point you don't care about power. Right. We're talking about like pure, you know, maximum throughput. Understood. So you don't care about power. Uh, and let's say, you know, you have a processor that can do like seven instructions per cycle. Mm -hmm. If you're currently doing four, you're, wasting. You might, you know, you're not get, losing anything by finding three more to do. Yeah. Uh, so if there is a chance that it might be useful, uh, why not? But it will significantly increase the power consumption. So right. this is something you never do in a low power environment. That's that's an awesome description. I, yeah, that makes me want to make sure I can get into your class even more if possible. <laughs> so you get of course, low latency is a totally different game. I actually never worked in that space. So I know, you know, only from general reading, uh, it's a lot of it has to has to do with like concurrency predictability uh, maintaining the correct priorities like never delaying you know the tasks that m must happen quickly and so on so a lot of log free concurrent algorithms and data structures are relevant mm -hmm. uh, for this just as they are for high performance for high throughput work, but they're relevant for entirely different reason. And sometimes you end up with different data structures. The only thing I tell about it, so at the beginning of my class, I will show sort of the same program, just you know, a condensed like version of, because the program doesn't do anything useful. It's just a small snippet of code, but basically optimized for the minimum power, the, the maximum predictable, the maximum predictability of the latency and for maximum throughput, and it's different optimizations. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And that's basically all I'm going to say about it, about the other the other two, and focus on the high throughput. Understood. So, are you doing any talks this year? Uh, I'm not giving uh, a talk at CPP con, con itself. I decided to invest more time in preparing for the class and. Well, no. and then you're not busy doing slides all, you know, you're not doing your slides all week trying to get to your talk, right? I mean, because that's the joke. Speakers are never done with their slides. Well, I'm doing slides for the class. I was uh, trying to look at the positive. <laughs> uh, but I, I, yeah, I basically, you know, it's my first class at CPPCon. I didn't want to divide my 
preparation between two, like a talk and a class? Having only done, you know, two talks and one of them being very, you know, it was a half hour talk. I, I can appreciate what you're saying because prep preparing for, you know, even an hour talk is comparative to doing a class. I mean, that's, I can understand the preparation difference, but either way, I think people will be in for a treat if they, if they take your class. Um, I hope so. Yeah. A kind of, you know, at the last moment, I almost regretted not doing it because in my work, I came ac across both some new performance related things that I haven't taught anywhere. And I don't know if I'll teach them in the class again. It depends on what the, you know, what the interests of the audience are, but it has to do with large scale hardware and also the C++ 20 concepts. And well, I guess I'll, I'll just have to wait until CPP now and the next CPP con to submit a talk on those. I, I was, I was just about to say the same thing, but then I figured, I figured that's what you would do anyways. So yeah. Fedor, I really appreciate your time today. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at the conference. Likewise. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. You took it. Bye-bye.